Hello, maestros. My name's Bahan, and we're here to maximize our workflows. This episode, we'll be talking about the debugger. Now, in our previous class, 103 basic actions, I told you about the most important action, pause. But where do we put our pauses? Well, that's where the debugger comes in. And in this episode, I'll be talking about the essential debugger actions, its user interface, and at the end, I'll tell you about the rest of the debugger actions. And here is a quick review of some of the situations where you might need some actions. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Let's make a new macro, command N, call it whatever you like, but it would make sense to call it toggle the debugger. Double click on no action, go to your debugger category and go to your actions and you'll find the debugger toggle. And if you're using, if you're doing a lot of debugging, it's also a good idea to have this sweet macro debugger breakpoint. And I'll talk about it a little bit later. All right. So you have your debugger toggle, make a new trigger. I've set mine to option escape. All right, so that's your toggle. You're starting or stopping your debugger. So this is the process of making macros. You put in your, your actions, you try them out. Doesn't work, double check to make sure all the actions are there. And if they're all there, start up your debugger mode and then execute your action again. And then take your macro step by step through every action with the debugger. And here's the user interface. You have this sweet little cancel. And then this is a little button that you'll be working with mostly. You're stepping through one. You can see action one has executed. And then um, action two is queued up. You can see here, action two is queued, queued up the notification. And this is the title of the, the macro. And let's go ahead and try that one as well. Very nice. And our third macro here is a execute uh, our third action here is an execute macro action. And whenever you're dealing with nested macros, you have the option of clicking these two buttons. And this button here is, it's kind of like skipping through, but you're not really skipping. It's more like execute this macro at full speed because you know it works. But if you want to try it out, you can go into it, go into it, check out a few steps, and then you can go out to execute the rest, or you can just continue through the whole thing. But um, yeah, so that's what these two buttons do. So let's go ahead and just uh, let's go ahead and just finish it. Skip over the helper, and you can see table tables are tasty and really tasty. And our fourth action is another notification. Try it out, and you're good to go. So that process was how you check to make sure that all the actions are ex executing properly. The next step is to figure out where the timing issue is. And that is where you want to use our breakpoint. And that's where we, uh, this sweet little breakpoint action. And you can you know, put one or two in depending on how long, maybe one, two or more, depending on how long your macro is. And you can think of the breakpoint simply as little dividers to separate your macro into to make it easier to isolate the problem. So let's go ahead and open it up again and execute it. And this is where we want to hit this little button here. And you'll play the first piece, which is our notification action. We'll play it. See, it's action one. And our next piece is our notification two and then our tasty tables. Play it again. And you can see the action two. And then we have our tasty tables. And tasty tables are really tasty. And our third piece is our action four. Yay. All right. So once we have isolated where that timing issue is coming from, then we can investigate by adding some more breakpoints or just a little bit of trial and error. All right. So let's see. Let's see what else. I think that's pretty much it. Let's go over and talk about the rest of the debugger actions. I'll open it up here in our category here and you can go through. All right, so the first one is our debugger start. This is basically where you're opening the debugger mode or starting the debugger mode, debugger mode. This is pretty much where you're starting the debugger. 
and then our finish is like your finishing we call it finish instead of close because it will finish or continue it will execute the remaining macros that are paused and then close the debugger and this is the this is the debugger toggle where it's a lot like it's just like the start and then finish and then next we have the new macros pause or run this does not toggle the your debugger but sets its run state so if i execute it here you can see that this little button here it's either pause so if i so if it's unchecked it's basically having this open but it's not actually pausing anything you can just see some see the see the actions run through pretty fast so i don't know how useful that is but yeah it's there and next is our debugger breakpoint all other macros basically whatever macro has this action it will ex it will open the debugger but it will exclude itself the debugger so it'll run smoothly it just open the debugger and next is our debugger this macro and all macros i couldn't really figure out what difference this was so if you really gotta know you might have to do some digging all right and next is our step over into an out when you're working with nested macros like i said before going into stepping out of executing yeah and lastly is our debugger continue all and just this macro and all is just like hitting the if you have if you have two up it's just like hitting all play on all of them or if you have just one just this macro it's just putting play on that one macro all right so there you have it debugger in keyboard maestro hope you enjoyed and i'll see you next time <laughs>